All right, there's the uh, sawmill. It's brought in here, started taking the skid apart, laying everything out. The boxes all got numbers on them, so I'm assuming that's the order we gotta open, up the, open them up in. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. See if we start figuring out where everything goes, assembling stuff. through and install all of these which are some adjusters so you can tighten or loosen depending on what you need to get this to be perfectly level or adjustment also an anchor point i guess gonna drill in to keep it fastened so it doesn't the whole thing doesn't shift so little status update we had to do a little bit of tweaking here because we're just kind of doing our own design here and making up our own frame where this is gonna lay one thing we did not take into account and this is why you now see some um timbers there is these log stoppers that are supposed to be up here when you you're supposed to be able to let them go down and get out of the way now a problem we had is we had these on center with the stone and of course this wouldn't go down as you can see it was hitting the uh the actual stone so we had to shift everything over but to be able to still have it supported um since we already had all the work of this base we just got a couple of timbers and ran them this way and put everything up on top of that so just a little thing we had to adjust on the fly here but anyways figured that problem out now and uh should be hopefully clear sailing now for us the way there's actually two of them there's one here at the first four feet and then eight feet away another one and we were talking about potentially getting an extra one we don't have it but to put it here at uh, the 20 foot mark so then we have it'd be nice to have three points of contact to have uh, logs up against. Little side note on why this all looks very different now. <laughs> Completely changed this up. Aerials drilling holes into the rock so we can fasten the wood. A couple two by fours to the rocks and then also put these cross members fastening to the timbers here so that uh, we kind of lock everything together and at the same time make a few little storage boxes so it keeps everything secured and fastened together in one kind of makes it all one unit all right so now we've got our string line set up all the way down here we're using a nut on each end to make sure that the space is the same so then if we got a nut on this end on the other end we can see any ups or downs in the rail along the way um, and also to get our line straight this way so we got our lines this way and our up and down and now we're gonna go ahead and just adjust here wherever we need to come up or down and we already have made sure that we're straight uh, this way so Getting this whole mount fastened here now. Starting to look like something. Finishing up fastening the winch frame assembly. Now we're gonna put the last bar, which is the front bar that goes across the front here. Okay. getting the cable assembled on there now so first step was getting this uh, point bolted on here and then these so-called yoke bolts that go underneath so you can adjust I guess some some tension if you need uh, once that's on you clip the cable through there run it up put the cable first then the ball nut through there or bolt through there and get that fastened then it comes back down now you gotta run the cable through there once it's through there 
comes back up to run through this hole here. <laughs> When then, but before before you do that, yeah, I gotta put a nut. It's gonna have a nut on each side. You can see that has a nut on each side, so you can tighten that. All right, getting the engine set up now. I have to remove the uh, air filter and all the stuff to get the cable that controls the throttle brought over to this throttle. So when we're we can control the throttle from the actual machine when you're running it. But yeah, just getting the engine fastened into place now. Big update here. Almost all together finally coming along. Uh, we've got the blade on, which is. Very close to the end, exciting final steps, getting some oil in the motor, gas, uh, final tweaks, just adjusting the blade, making sure it was level, getting our uh, height, the thickness uh, uh, gauge on, just the final kind of tweaks on here. And uh, shortly we should have this up and running. It's been a lot of issues as some other people have seen before or have been saying before where there's some parts are missing or some parts aren't allocated in the correct bag according to the manual but uh we kind of figured it out mostly with uh, mario's good help there there is extra engineering there and uh yeah slowly but surely but it's almost there just the final steps now be cutting wood in no time i think this is the moment of truth we're ready to give her a try see if she fires up <laughs> we got fuel got oil i think everything's in place at least we're about to find out pretty soon anyway she's on on okay. and she's working one little bit of a wiring issue here that when it's all connected the way we believe it's supposed to be connected must be doing something wrong because the uh, machine won't start it's like even with it on on it's like it's not bypassing the uh, the safeties or something some wire is not or the sensor for the box somewhat something's not making a good connection and we can't get it to uh, start trying to troubleshoot this now okay so we figured out our wiring issue and the issue was there actually was no issue uh, it was a sensor in here that wasn't making proper contact with the box so if we open up this box you'll see these sensors that we had installed here one and two and so these were not making proper contact with the plastic when the machine was uh, trying to be started so it wouldn't start uh, if these weren't making contact because that is the safety if the machine's going and it doesn't sense that these are touching the plastic Which would indicate this panel came off then the machines automatically just gonna shut off and that's why it wouldn't start so So we got to make that hole For one of these rods hole is done now we can drop that down So we're ready to go to try and mill our first uh couple logs here so we're gonna get ready and see if we can actually get this thing working how to do another adjustment on this being level I think the ground between freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing has shifted slightly so we had to just go ahead and adjust here on the railings to get it back into to level so one of the first things we're gonna be milling here is a 16 foot beam to go over top of this uh, woodshed we had here. This is just a shed that we pile up firewood in. Uh, and we need, uh, the roof was all old. It's about 15 years old, it's been sitting here. So we just ripped off the old roof that was plywood. And the beam here had rotted out. So it was just an old two by six that was here. So now we're gonna make at least a three by six. We're gonna make a bit of a thicker beam, three by six, three by seven, whatever it works out to be. A nice thick new beam to go across the top here so we can do our new roof and start piling up the firewood. Getting it all nice and piled up over here. And there it is, here comes beam number one. So we start on the narrow end there, so we know where our, kind of our zero point is, and the wider end on this side. I think that's what makes sense. Um, so we know exactly where our starting point is and how much will come off at the end is uh, based on our starting point there. So we're not kind of guessing it. Not even a couple of feet through our first cut, or a piece has fallen off. <laughs> Maybe that was some of the extra bolts we had. Huh, interesting. Got to get that fastened up. All right, I think we got that figured out. Ha <laughs> ha. 
almost cut half half of it by the end. All right, well, that's our first cut. Here we go, cut number two. We got it nice and squared up here. Matched up nicely with our three supports. Sorry guys, you probably noticed me, Mr. Loser there, getting some posts for the Instagram where you will be seeing this if you follow me, if you don't already, dirty.diggers on Instagram, you should be following me. Uh, then you can keep up with that kind of stuff. That's gotta be at least eight inches, maybe almost nine, nine inches high. And on this side, we probably have close to six, maybe. But obviously we still have to take off a little bit more on either, either two ends, so it'll work nicely for our beam here, which will be our beam for our fire firewood shed so like everyone else has done we're cutting off that guard for the sawdust as it uh, only hampers the sawdust from getting out so there we go now the sawdust should flow a little nicer Right, so we got four square edges it's actually a perfect six by six that kind of worked out but we uh, do need a we're gonna try to use a three by six beam so we're just gonna cut this one down the middle and then it'll give us two three by six beams uh, and the whole thing is about 19 feet we only need 16 feet so the ending piece there that's not quite 100 percent that's okay we'll have more than our 16 feet from here to near the machine there which is all we really need 16 feet to span here for again the first beam we're trying to cut here it's a shame, I know it's a perfect six by six, but it's okay. We got a big supply over there to get other perfect, even bigger ones, eight by eights, nine by nines. We got some pretty big beams that we're going to be using right after this. The next step will be to dig uh, some holes in here with an auger to put in some posts to then build the shed where this is gonna be encased in. So our two three by six beams. Three inches. About three inches. Yeah, it's pretty good. So there are two beams there at over three feet extra. Obviously, that's gonna go for up there, okay? <laughs> two pieces that came off of those first two beams that we cut, and the, the scrap stuff's over there. But we're gonna try and take advantage of these here and get two boards out of them two uh, one and a half by six inch boards. Right, and now our final thing we're doing is we're making some uh, two inch two inch boards by eight feet so that they're gonna go across this way on top of our ridge beam that we made here and that's gonna be it for our first project here at the sawmill tune in next time we're gonna show you the whole assembly here of the shed in the process of building that but yeah if you guys enjoyed remember to like subscribe if you're new and keep on digging we'll catch you in the next one guys take care or keep on milling now so keep on milling as well and digging all right guys, thanks for watching, take care.